The timing was perfect to bring these three great artists together, Shari Deans, Sri Prabha, uh, and uh, Matthew Schreiber. And of course, it was uh, Shari Deans that provided this wonderful overview of how we might look at all three exhibitions uh, with her line, The Spirit Lives in Everything. And it's quite true as you look around this gallery. And what I love is John Cage's comment that she really didn't like to frame things because she liked the work of art to feel as though it was ever present in the larger world. Sri, of course, thinks of the Vedic, the Indian traditions, uh, and with the saris that he took from his mother, creating these wonderful installations uh, with the sounds of meditation that just sort of let you float through the space. It becomes a really multi-century experience. As does uh, uh, Matthew Shriver's work. Uh, Matthew, who is just this brilliant artist who makes holograms. It allows your eye to walk into a two-dimensional glass surface and you see, in the case of his work, the tropical life of Florida, uh, the spiritual camps uh, in New York, and uh, uh, as well as at Casadega. The visitors are going to find that all three exhibitions together make a really striking, very telling, a way to use your eye uh, and, uh, and have it sort of be connected to your emotions. This is a coming of age for Shari Deans. We have a film, we have a new book, and now we have a major exhibition in a very, very beautiful museum. And we feel that Shari's career has come together in a way that we would never have imagined. The timing of the show, along with the other elements that have been published, mean that Shari's accessible in a way that she hasn't been before. When you walk around here, you're seeing a compressed time period in the 50s where Shari was in California. She was in the Dalles Gorge with the petroglyph rubbings where she was documenting these surfaces for the University of Washington. But she went on to make her own set in color. Her admiration for the ancient artists and her belief in the significance of their work was very telling in the way that she handled her pigments. She documented the sidewalks of New York in 53 with Johns, Cy Twomley, Rachel Rosenthal, John Cage helping her hold down these magnificent giant pieces of fabric in the middle of the night when there was less traffic and she would be out there with her roller. And when you look at these things, you say, well, how many different ways did she touch this material? How many different places did she take it when she's created this montage of, of uh, energy? So um, that was a very important period, the 53, 54 period, because a lot of these artists came together for the first time, including Johns and Rauschenberg. The title of my exhibition at the Boca Raton Museum of Art is Resonator Reanimator, and I chose that title because it explores two key concepts. Resonator being part of the idea concept of us being part of the universe and the resonance that it imbues when you're thinking about it, your consciousness, and it reflects back. That's the resonance part. And then the reanimator part is uh, the idea of life starting from the cosmos and coming down to earth and making everything happen. So we have this on one hand, the resonating part and then the reanimator part. And it's this push-pull that brings everything back together. More contemporary science is really looking back at things saying that, you know, the interconnectedness of things, the, the universe being part of ourselves, not other than ourselves, that being like the main thing that I'd like people to get to get out of this is that we're not disconnected from nature 
and the cosmos. It's all interdependent and part of us. And it brings to light these wonders if we choose to view it that way. As I was putting this show together, I realized that there is a lot of space to explore in the museum. The ability to create a, a vast uh, yet intimate cosmos and a portal in a way for people to explore, walk through and feel and think about consciousness and perhaps elevate your own consciousness while you're experiencing my show. So Orders of Light is the title of the exhibition. Can you tell us why you chose that? Orders of Light comes from, a, it's just a, a technical term that has to do with holography and the way that light functions. So part of the core of this entire show and my work has to do with holography. So uh, you focused on two specific communities for some of these holograms, Lilydale and Casadega. Uh, what about those two places drew you to them? They're both spiritualist communities. It's a uh, communities where you have to verify that you're able to speak to dead people. Um, and that was very interesting for me as a subject matter. And it started in Florida. And then I just started to research it after I found out how interesting and bizarre it is. And it seemed like a perfect fit for holography. So you've done these different series of drawings that you altered the way that your eyes and mind are perceiving the objects that you're drawing. Um, so how did you intervene in that? In a lot of the drawings I do kind of physically try to do something to myself, to my body, as a filter. I feel like drawing, when you draw from life, by looking at something that is filtering through you to your hands. So I was trying to change that filter slightly. So the three exhibitions are on view through uh, uh, October. So we look forward to welcoming visitors uh, to the Boca Raton Museum of Art. Uh, and uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed by this introduction to uh, uh, Shari Deans, uh, Matthew Schreiber, and Tree Prabha.